your team captain for 4D. You've uh, been touted as perhaps the strongest seed coming into this tournament, but you've been watching this team play over the course of the day. Nervous at all? No. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. It's just dude. That's just what he's like. This was me seven years ago in the very first Splatoon UK Championships. Back then it was called the Great British Splatoff, and back then the whole infrastructure of the Splatoon European Championships wasn't exactly developed like it is now today. Now since the time I have not been able to reclaim this title as UK Champion since 2016. Today in 2023, as the Splatoon UK Champs has finally concluded, my team and I were strong enough to come up on top and secure the victory. The very unfortunate thing is that it wasn't streamed live by Nintendo themselves. However, there were people in the crowd actually streaming the event and also recording the entire event. So in this video, I would like to talk about what happened in the Splatoon UK Championship Finals and my seven year journey coming to this point. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get started. Now first, we have to go back six years ago to the Splatoon UK Champs in 2017. Now I was still with 4D at the time, my UK team for these UK Championship events. My team consisted of, of course, myself, Donut, Dragonudo, and Druid. All of us at the time were the top echelon of players within the UK scene. Until going into Splatoon 2, where a new challenger approached. Team Mako. A new group of really strong UK players that consisted of Lemon, Utopia, Sweegly, and of course, Kaji. Now, if any of you guys are familiar with any Splatoon 2 competitive lore, you'd probably recognize that two of these players were part of one of the strongest European teams in Splatoon 2's history. That being Sweegly and Kaji, who are both a part of Kraken Paradise, a rival team of mine that I used to play against almost all the time when I used to play on Team Olive slash Ghost Gaming, which was, of course, another top team at the time. It is top four of the Splatoon 2 UK Championships, and it is 4D versus Team Mako. In our semi-final single elimination rounds in a best of three my team were not able to win against team mako at the time with the last game ending like this down to 24 23 21 now for them sweetly still in position of the rainmaker can they make it out can he turn into squid mode again oh onto the podium word. doing it Amazing with the first mako. take wow mako taking map number three here in the splatoon 2 uk championship in a clean sweep of 4d on map three it was a very unfortunate way to lose. However, there were some issues with the event. One specific thing that it was played on the incorrect patch. Long story short, the tri Slosher was the strongest weapon in the game in Splatoon 2 at that point. And they nerfed it significantly weeks prior to this event. So our team practiced with completely different weapons. And we also played this event coming up to the top four on the current patch, which then the top four was played on the previous patch, which pretty much messed a lot of things up and didn't have the significant changes of the patch. So Nintendo UK made a second chance of them, which allowed two teams to go to the European champs. And they also had to do this for every other country as well. So we go to the second chance event, we win that. And we go to the European champs that was in Switzerland. I believe it was a 16 team tournament when we actually caused some major upsets. I believe we beat team Spain in the very first round. That one felt really good because I remember scribbing against that team every single time and losing against them. But in the tournament where it really mattered, we win against them. We then faced the second German team, which we all just played extremely well. And we managed to get all the way up to top four in the European Championships by losing to El Firmament, which was a French team at the time. The overall winner of the European Champs in that time was Team Germany, which you'd probably recognize some of the players like Kayato, Tommy Echo, Margin, and of course, Wadzum. They played extremely well that event. So 2017 concludes, very, very interesting year. We then move on to the next Splatoon UK Championships of 2018. And this was an event I really wanted to win. So we won our qualifier, the Splatoon Inkling Open, still with 4D at the time, my UK team. I believe in the finals of our qualifier, we played a variation of Marco. And I have to say, we did play really well. However, a qualifier is not the finals of the UK championships. The finals is where it really matters. And of course, my team actually do make it to the grand finals. With again, the Great Wall being Team Marco being in front of my face. This match was played in a best of five and we lost three to one. And I can't tell you guys enough of how upset I was to losing once again, basically just coming short of this one team. You visibly see it on my face during this event. 
But of course, you know, I really wanted to win. I'm as competitive as can be. Your boy doesn't turn up to tournaments to lose, you know? So you know what? Damn right I was upset. Because at the same time, I saw their trophies and I was just like, man, I just, I just want another trophy, man. I want another one. And you know, the cool thing about this one UK event is that Nogami himself was actually there. And you know, this was actually one of the very first times I met Professor Nogami. And he actually told me at the event that he knows who I am and he actually watches my videos or has been watching my videos for quite some time coming up to the event. So for me, it meant even more because I really wanted to win in front of him. But of course that didn't happen, but it is what it is. However, after the event, when the, the UK people were having like a, like a cypher, dance cypher, because they started playing like music at the end of the event, your boy was still upset, but Nogami spotted me. And of course, word for word, I don't exactly remember what he said, but I remember what he was talking about with me. Like, it was on the lines of, hey, don't be upset. You know, you played extremely well and I was extremely proud of how you played. And of course, there'll always be a next time. So keep your head up and, you know, keep playing. And, you know, you got this. You do very, very well for what you do. So, you know, your boy took that as well as he could, shrugged off the bad feelings and got back to grinding. Now, going on to the next year, Splatoon UK Champs 2019. Oh, wait. Don't we remember? COVID happened during that. Any form of UK champs, European champs, world champs, completely out the picture for the next four years. We fast forward all the way up to 2022. Pretty much when Splatoon 3 is coming out. Wait. <gasps> There was a project of mine forming, which was known as Team Spark, which is the team that I am currently on today. Joining it, I knew exactly what I was going to get myself into. Now, when you look at it, I have an extremely large gap of not playing Splatoon competitively for about three years. And of course, as time goes on, players are going to get much better. So I knew joining a new team was going to be very rough. Games are going to be much more competitive than before. And you know what? Me and Spark, we played in tournaments, we played in lands. Some have been successful, some not so successful. But of course, getting back into things, this was just all part of the process. Spark is a all UK team. It consists of myself, Takimi, Nebula, Johnny, and Chano. And in the UK scene, we are looked at as some of the best. However, there are also other teams that are really big powerhouses, I have to say. One of which is known as Chewit's Mafia. Chewit's Mafia consisted of players known as Ips, Samage, Chris Snipes, and Spore. All very good players. This specific team was one of our biggest rivals in the UK scene. And heading on to the finally announced 2023 UK Championships, we knew that this team is going to be one of our biggest problems during this event. Now, of course, there were plenty of qualifiers, and one of which was an online qualifier, where in the finals, we had to play against Stuart's Mafia. We tried our very best during this specific qualifier, knowing that Stuart's is a really, really strong team. Going against them is always a tough time, and especially scrimming against them was always a tough time. Unfortunately, during this specific qualifier, we don't win, and we become the runners-up during this specific event. Now, like I said before, the qualifiers are not the final. So we went ahead to go to a, a very abruptly announced qualifier, which was in RakuCon in Manchester. My team decided to train over there and we eventually got the spot to, you know, play in the Splatoon UK Champion Finals. But I believe the next week after that, a Splatoon UK LAN event called Splat Vibes and Chewitz was there once again. Now going into this tournament, Spark and Chewitz were the favorites going into it. My team did extremely well during the group stage. We qualified for the top four, but when it came to it, we did horrendous. We played a team called Ultraviolet. The players on this team were Rocky, Jakey, Andy, and Ninja Train. We got smoked. A straight 3-0 for Ultraviolet against Spark. We came into this event thinking that we were probably going to face against Chewitz, but yet, we didn't even get the opportunity to. This was also a single elimination top four. Now, I'm not even too sure what happened against playing Ultraviolet, where we just could not get used to how they were playing. But honestly, it was a very good thing that we lost to them, because the thing is for us, it made us change so many things about how we played, how we looked at some of our compositions, how we looked at our openings. And I feel like it genuinely just made us a much better team, especially when it came to playing in the Splatoon 3 UK Championships. We did not get the opportunity to play against Chewitz Mafia 
in this event. And they actually did end up winning Splat Vibes, which is expected when you're one of the best teams in the UK. Now, a couple of weeks passed, and it is now time for the UK Championships. Now, the Splatoon 3 UK Champs 2023 was a tournament where eight teams qualified for. It was also double elimination. Going into this tournament, we had two teams that we know that are going to be some trouble for us. One of them, of course, being Chuet's Mafia, but the other one also known as the Pink Pixies. Now, they were named the Krusty Krab for this event. Not sure why. However, the players on this team were all very, very good. They've had people such as Orion, Terra, NX, and Pancake. These players were actually the winners of a really large tournament known as Breeze. So 110%, we had to watch for them. So going into the UK Finals, we play against our first team. The players on this team were a mixture of Mako, Ultraviolet, and 4D. It had Dragonudo, Kaji, Jakey, and Rocky. All of them being very experienced Splatoon players, and I've pretty much mentioned them all in some part of this video. However, in our best of five that we play, we do win convincingly. It did feel like we had a few hiccups here and there, but we do play very well. Going into our next game, we are facing the Pink Pixies, the winners of the big UK event called Breeze, one of the favorites in this tournament. This match for us goes extremely well. Now, just so you guys understand, the format for this tournament was a little bit weird. The very first point of the game was a best of three turf war. Rest were the four ranked game modes. So if you win the best of three turf, you get one point. If you win one ranked mode, you get one point. So we win the best of three turf against them. We then play our next game against them, one of the ranked games. It was played on Clamblitz on Mahi Mahi Resort. And it just felt like that this team was really, really good at just being able to hold and gain control whenever they wanted to. Their first push to open up the Clam Basket was extremely good and basically secured them the next game. It is 1-1. Going on to the next game, Rainmaker Brinewater Springs. I pull out the vanilla Jet Squelcher and I have got to say, I have probably never played a more perfect vanilla Jet Squelcher game when it came to this event. Specifically, what I remember is that I was on the platform going for the Rainmaker Pop. I dropped early. The thing is, is that when I dropped early, I brought all the attention of the other team to actually look at one specific spot. Now, I didn't challenge anyone, but I knew people were looking at me. So what I did is that I jumped right back out, back to the spawn, got my vacuum out as they used the crab tank, and was able to shoot a vacuum shot, killing two. I then cleaned up the last guy, picked up the Raymaker, and headed towards the first checkpoint. There was one more straggler coming from spawn, and I was able to kill him straight away. One of my teammates picked up the Raymaker, and I allowed them to walk within my vacuum so they're safe. They die with the Raymaker pretty much near the pedestal, but the thing is I had another vacuum fully charged and I made sure to wait before I shot it because I wanted to make sure that the vacuum shot popped the Raymaker and also popped a very large portion of their side of the map. And that it did because the thing is when this vacuum shot went out, it completely wiped the entire team. This is what dudes like. Oh, oh, game two secured. After this game, the amount of confidence that I had, at least within my own play, just went from here to like all the way up here. And I used that confidence and just trusting my team and what we were trying to do into the next game, which allowed us to win the set. It was ship shaped tower control, and I just remember us doing one extremely good push, being very patient, and also just having great defense just all around, just so that we weren't getting picked apart. And we always had someone there to actually like defend the tower whenever possible. So with that, that took us to the winner's finals. And who do you think that we had to face against in the winner's finals? Of course, it's Chewitz Mafia. Now, the thing is, when it came to going against this team once again, the first thing that I said is just that if we played the exact same way of how we played against Pixies, then we definitely have this in the bag. So we just had to keep our confidence up, keep our momentum up, and basically stay loud because how we were calling out was just extremely loud and everyone was communicating as best as possible. And it was some of the best communication that I've definitely heard from my team, period. So going on to the best of three turf war, we win two out of one. I believe it was our first game that didn't go as planned. It was very, very close, but we then picked it up in the next two games. 
The next two ranked games that we play did not go as planned as Truett's Mafia do secure two more games. I believe we played on Marco Mart Zones, which was a game where it was very back and forth, but it felt like that they just had way more control than us. And they did so much more when it came to just painting the entire map, so it was just a lot easier for them to hold. The next one was Humpback Pump Track Clam Blitz, which I felt like it came back to the same situation. It was kind of back and forth in some cases, but it was really hard in terms of just getting the initial push so we can actually get something done. It is one to two with Chewitz Mafia leading the set. If they win one more time, they are going to knock us down to the losers finals. So we have to pick it up if we want to remain strong. The next map is Barnacle and Dime Rainmaker. How this game started is that Chewitz started off the game strong. They were able to win the first neutral game and I'm pretty sure they pushed it towards 40 on their first push. This is a solid first push for Barnacle and Dime. And I feel like the thing with this map is just that it's so stally that defense is extremely favorable. So them pushing it to 40 already is just like, wow, we basically could win this already. But of course, not without a fight. I believe we finally overcome them and try to make our way out of the spawn. And I'm also using the vanilla Jet Scorcher once again. And at least from my perspective, what I remember happening is that I was going on somewhat of a angle shooter spree where I was just hitting all the members of Chewitz basically directly, partially stunning all of them and marking them as much as possible. And I felt like it was helpful because it didn't allow them to just push in as freely. And during this period, I had to play somewhat of a stoolie but more aggressive game. So I remember just getting to that first checkpoint, leading my teammate onto the pedestal. And I believe they didn't actually hit the pedestal at first, but it was close enough where another teammate was able to actually pop the Rainmaker and just get the checkpoint uh, right after and then. Truitz then pushed back and then there's like a bit of a fight there. We just had to play another game of just pick them off slowly and then get myself set up. And I remember specifically, like I pushed up onto the left platform and I had a vacuum. And my initial idea is just that I need to make sure my people are safe. And I notice an inkjet gets used. So I basically just use my vacuum and just use it on the inkjet. So they're just pretty much eliminated and their inkjet is basically useless at that point. With that, we basically just continued to push, went all the way in. I picked up the Rainmaker. I had to be a little bit slow with it because I really wanted to make sure that I can get the knockout. And we basically won the game right then and there. Which then led us to a game five situation, which was on Sturgeon Shipyard Tower Control, which is one of the most snowbally maps of all time. How this map pretty much goes is that if you get a push and it goes very, very far, if you don't get that push successfully, the other team has such a golden opportunity to just go ahead and push the tower even further if everything goes to plan. That's exactly what happened during this game. We pushed the tower pretty much to nine and thought, you know what? All right, that's good. But then we had to do a crazy, crazy defense. And unfortunately, it did not hold as well as we wanted it to. Because then Turrets basically pushed it all the way past nine, all the way up to four. Now, this is in the very last minute of the game. Like, I believe we're defending for at least three minutes uh, during the game until they actually get that pushed up four. What I remember is that I killed three that was near the tower. And with this, it enables a wipeout. It's about 50 seconds left on the clock. They're winning with the push to four, we're losing by the push to nine. And what I remember happening is that I went onto their snipe area and I had an ink zooka. And the thing is with this ink zooka is that I needed to get a pick. I feel like if we didn't get a pick, then we probably lose the game here. But my first try zooka shot, I sniped out the bull point, which probably was one of their strongest anchors for their team. And with that, we just started fragging them out. We pushed past and took the lead and I believe the points were at one. And the thing is, the time was so low, I believe Channel started celebrating earlier before the game was even over. I was just screaming at him, we haven't won the game yet, because they actually forced an overtime. But the thing is, we still had enough players there to actually basically take up the last remaining players. And we got the win over Chewitz in the winner's finals. It's so much fun.
This team was a huge rival to us, so to win in this sort of way just meant even more to us than you could ever imagine. So this brought us on to the grand final set, which became a bit of a mishmash because I believe the venue was closing, so they turned it into a best of three for both grand finals and bracket reset. Truitz and Pixies played their losers final set. Truitz win pretty convincingly. So in the grand finals, we have to play Truitz once again. So we played our first game on Mincemeat Tower Control. We have a comp for that. And it was a very, very close game. I had a lot of really good Trizookas I remember in this game. And I think this game was so close. It was like 49 to 50. But we managed to hold him off just enough to be able to win this game. Game two, we played Scorch Zones. I definitely felt like this could have gone better. If you ask me, I feel like we do definitely need a little bit of a comp change on this specific map because we don't exactly have anything for retaking. Or I believe the retaking is a lot more of a struggle when you look at our comp right here. But either way, we lose this against Chewitz, and then we move on to game three. This game being the potential decider of a bracket reset, or us being the UK champions. It's on Clamblitz Hagglefish. Not gonna lie, the game was pretty much a very, very large stalemate. I feel like there were probably more times where I could have got a Kraken push with my Night 6 Galdeco. But a lot of the time, the game, this game was very, very stooly. And the very unfortunate thing is this, that Chewitz Mafia made sure to get the win in this specific game, forcing the bracket reset. Now, this bracket reset is basically the set that decides everything. We play the first game, Raymaker Eel Tell, and Chewitz come out swinging. They're way more aggressive than us. They punished off in a lot of different scenarios and made sure to hold control extremely well. They pushed it all the way to one. So we had to knock out the game if we actually wanted to take it. We lose the first game of the bracket reset. If Chewitz wins one more game, they are declared the UK champions. So after they won this game, I remember hearing one of them from the other team saying that they ain't done yet. We are basically backed into a corner here because we have done so well just to sort of come to the point of losing again. So when I hear that and also knowing like how far we've come, I just thought to myself, there's no way that we're going to let this slip out of our hands. We've done so much to get to this point and we did not come here just to lose. So I tell my team going into the next game that we are definitely not out of this yet. We got this. Let's go. It's humpback pump track tower control. True it start the game swinging once again. They have a really good push and I believe they push it to around 48. We managed to stop the push fairly convincingly and we got a wipeout and after this point everything just pretty much came together. We pretty much got set up in perfect positions. We held them out in one particular area on this map and we basically just closed in on them using all the specials that we had and I just remember one of my teammates getting one pick and another one getting another and the situation for us was favorable. It was a four versus two and we pretty much just got a zero to 100 push just straight away just like that and it was such a good win again because it just gave us so much momentum going into our next game which was flounder heights splat zones and recently we all knew to ourselves that we are insanely good at this map this is the final game of the tournament whoever wins this game is the uk champions and the game starts and our team comes out swinging Finally, because a lot of these times it feels like we don't become out swinging enough. During this time, my teammates are just getting picks after picks after picks. And we secure both zones pretty convincingly and we have such a good hold of the entire map. And I'm just saying to my teammates that we need to stall, just stall them out, just stall them out. And I remember Nebula saying, look at them, they're scared, they're not moving. And the thing is, when I hear that from one of my teammates, for me specifically, that brings out a confidence in me where it's just like, I know they're scared now. I'm going to take advantage of that. So legitimately, we play such a good holding game because we basically can see where everyone's at. We have an idea of what's going to happen next. And in the end, it's just enough. We get the point all the way to three. Now, Chewitz do get one retake and they're able to secure both zones, which is just like not what we need right now. However, with the confidence that we all had and how we know how to play this map just to be able to take back control, we got the control back in a solid fashion. I just remember wiping them out again where I got a few Zuka kills that just were just big, let's just say. 
And I can't tell you guys enough how much I was just looking at the timer go down for our points. Just seeing it getting closer and closer to three because I just knew the moment it hits zero that we are going to win. So the extra points timer was just going down. It's going 10, 9, 8, 7. And I'm just looking at it, just looking at it. And then my people are just screaming. And I'm, for me, I'm just like, we just need to keep paying the zone. Everyone just keep focusing the zone. Just don't do anything, but just focus the zone. And we do that in the best way. One of my teammates gets an extra pick. And then I see two two people on turrets down and we still have four people up so i'm just like just pain just pain and then we win the game yes Get in! Yes! Like, I literally destroyed my voice on that stage. Because the thing is, it's just that I was so, so happy that I finally broken through this wall. Where it feels like every single time I played a UK Champs, or I guess the two previous times I've done that, or the teams and rivals that we've faced, it's always felt like it's just been a large wall that I've never been able to break past. And for it to finally happen, Seven years later, it just felt way more fulfilling than probably any of my other competitive accolades that I have achieved as a competitive Splatoon player. And with that, Spark became the Splatoon 3 UK champions of 2023, which now next month will be representing the UK in the European Championships in Germany. So needless to say, it's been a seven year journey for me to get one of these once again. And I can't lie, it feels amazing. So. All I really want to do is just continue to grow off this and basically just keep doing more as I progress. It's been a very long time and that is my journey as a Splatoon competitive player. Now, if you're looking to get into competitive Splatoon yourself, I'd highly recommend you check out the Splatoon Strongholds Discord. It's basically a gateway of getting yourself into competitive Splatoon. If you're trying to recruit people into your team, it's a great place for that. If you're trying to look for people looking for players to play on a team, I'm sure the people in that Discord can lead you in a way to find yourself on a competitive team. And on top of that, one more thing, Breeze. It's a very big tournament that I mentioned in this video, and it's going to be in Manchester in the United Kingdom. Now, if you're from the UK or from anywhere from Europe, I would highly recommend for you guys to come out to Breeze. Of course, I will be there, but again, it's going to be a very large competitive tournament. And even if you just want to watch or you're just a casual and want to meet other Splatoon players, then 110% come out to Breeze. It's going to be happening in November this year, and it's going to be an amazing event. So once you've got your team, Come through, my people. Either way, guys, this is the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to try and do you guys proud in the European champs. Make sure you tune in for that because I'm going to try and do my best. And make sure to subscribe and like the video if you have not already. I know you haven't. So I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching this video.